Hello again, thinkers. And uh, given the picture, I know this is how some of you feel when you look at a proof for the first time and you're trying to figure out how to do it. So let's talk a little bit about some proof strategies. And I pulled this argument from the exercises. Uh, here's the premises that you're given and the conclusion that you're trying to prove. So now what do you do? I mean, it just looks like a big mess, right? What do you do? Where do you start? Well, one of the strategies that the textbook talks about, and I endorse, is the idea of working backwards. You know you've got to get to, not you if possible. So start asking your questions. If I could get something, that what would it be that would get me to not you? For instance, look here. Here's a conditional statement. Right? If we had this by itself, you probably know pretty quickly now how you could get not you. Get not P, modus tollens, not you, kaboom. But we don't have that by itself. But we do know that if we had that by itself, we could. So that's a good starting point, right? If I was doing this on a set, uh, like by hand on a sheet of paper, I would often do this out to the side. Uh, but I'll just kind of drop it down here. So I need, know I need to get um, not you. And if I could get if you then P by itself and not P, that would get me to not you. So I'm just kind of jotting some things down here that I would like to get if possible. All right, let's ask ourselves now, is there a way to get either not P or to get you if you then P by itself? Well, notice here we've got not P already, so kaboom, on our way. But now we need to get this. How could we get this by itself? Hmm. Well, I think some of you are probably already recognizing this is just a large conditional statement. And this is just the consequent of this larger conditional statement. Modus ponens tells me that when I have a conditional, if I could satisfy the antecedent, then I get the consequent. So now, here's the question. Can I get Z or R? Well, if you've watched the earlier video, I'm sorry, that should be or not R. If you've watched the earlier videos, you know that we've worked through uh, a constructive dilemma to get just that. So let's work it out here now real quick. Line 6. Um, I'm going to say Z or not R from lines 1, 2, 3, constructive dilemma. Notice now I am uh, could just sort of follow the path that I've drawn down here. Now that I've got that by itself, which is what I knew I needed to get in order to get this by itself, let me just fill it on out. I can say now, if you then P, and list it all by itself because I've got line 4, and I've got line 6, which satisfies the form of a modus ponens. Now line 8. Since I've got if you then P by itself, and I've already got not P, I can say not you. From line 7 and line 5, by rule of modus tollens. So hopefully this working backwards strategy will be helpful for you. Again, just start with what you need and try to figure out what you would uh, have to have to get where you need to go. It's a good rule to live by. All right, we'll see you online.